Hello everybody, this is Budrich. Let's do some tabs in my browser today. Because I feel I have to mention this uh, podcast here on the metal. If you haven't uh, heard about it already, you, you kind of have to check this out. Uh, it's a podcast that just ended season one here. This, this was uploaded, uh, yeah, what is it? Five days ago. Um, the wrap up for season one, which is about eight episodes or something here, 10 episodes maybe. And it's a, a podcast about uh, tales from the hardware software interface. And it's an interview podcast where each episode uh, has one uh, special guest uh, and the, the episodes focus around that person's career uh, mostly. And they, they can be people who have worked uh, with like uh, creating some new file system, maybe some, uh, one, one of them, one, one of the last one was about, uh, he, he, I think it was a game developer. Um, and it, often people from, from like the 80s or 90s who, who had, who did their, their most prominent work back then, but sometimes also people who are still very much uh, active in, in like areas that, that aren't really, you don't get these stories that often and it's such a great podcast so many great stories and also the hosts here uh, Brian Cantrill, Jesse Frazell and Steve Tuck uh, they are also the, the founders of this company Oxide Computing which is providing this podcast so I guess this podcast is like a way for them to promote this uh, company uh, let's not get into that what this company is and, and you, whatever it, it, it's not for you and me anyways it's it's like a company for companies whatever uh, but Brian Cantrill is somewhat uh, famous uh, and some of you probably know who, who he is um, he made a lot of uh, talks uh, like uh, presentations and stuff and, and they are often quite good in my opinion I, I like Brian Cantrill's talks because he have a very high energy and, and he seems to be very genuinely very much interested in in the things he talks about and he have he have like a wide uh, span of his expertise is, is quite wide um, and he's also an acclaimed uh, very good programmer uh, right now he seems to be and it has been for, for like a, a couple of years, he really thinks that Rust is the best language somehow. But he have been uh, programming and, and especially on, on the OS level, uh, he, he was uh, working for Sun uh, in, in the 90s, uh, whatever. The other co-host uh, is... Uh, uh, Jess Frasell here, Jesse Frasell, which have been working on Docker and is also seems like a great person, a great uh, programmer, very interested in computer history and programming. So they are kind of similar, but it is really Brian who drives the, the questions and, and the, the episodes. Um, Steve Tuck is like... <laughs> The, the, they call him, this is our boss, Steve Tuck, and him, uh, whatever. A great podcast, it doesn't really matter who any of these are, because the, the important thing is the guests, and they, they really let the guests talk. Some of the episodes are, are like three hours long, I think the longest uh, episode is. But uh, it's like sometimes you just don't want uh, the episodes to stop at all. And another great thing with this, so even if you did know about this podcast, because I think it is quite popular, um, you might not know that they have like the best show notes in uh, podcasting history. Yeah, just look at this. <laughs> it's incredible. You can spend like a week just uh, investigating these show notes and and creating thousands of tabs in your browser. So that is really the main thing I wanted to highlight here. Check out uh, On The Metal podcast. And I think this last episode is actually quite 
a good episode to start with because it's a wrap up. They, they kind of highlight their, their favorite moments from the season. And even if they kind of spoil the best of, of, of the season, it doesn't really matter. I think you, if you aren't sure this is what you want to do, then you can listen to this and then you will get a, a very good um, uh, introduction on what, what, what it really is about. But uh, the, the even better would be just to start listening to this and, and you will probably get, uh, get hooked. And it's nice, you know, it's, uh, the season one is already uh, up and out, so you can binge uh, listen to this um, if you want to. And I, I, I just re-downloaded all of the episodes here, I, I'm gonna re-listen to them uh, till uh, season two. Uh, is released because that is planned whatever okay um, I found this uh, podcast or, or found out about it by listening to another podcast which is a Swedish podcast I have mentioned it before it's called Code Snack and this is one of the hosts on that pod- podcast Christopher Grönlund and this is a presentation he did on uh, last year's uh, Linux Conf AU in Australia and um, this is a really good presentation also uh, it's called let's lisp like it's 1959 but it's um, it's not really a presentation about lisp it's more about like that early early computing history and the origins of for uh, for example lisp and how it came about and the people involved and stuff and this is such a great talk it's re- i highly recommend this this uh, presentation it really makes you uh, think a bit about things. Uh, But he was the one who recommended this on the metal on that Swedish podcast. So that's how I found out about it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I have this uh, playlist on uh, Bud Labs channel where where I kind of have a, it's not that old, it's maybe a month ago or something when I started to to separate all technology uh, topic uh, videos uh, into its own uh, playlist here called Wonders of Technology. So here, here I just add, yeah, for example, this video. Um, so that's also a recommendation, maybe. Um, uh, I also have um, another playlist called Bra Grejer, uh, which I will try to clean up here uh, someday to, to move all non music things. Uh, to its own uh, playlist or at least all technology things will get moved for example here is a talk by by Bjarn Straussrup uh, this is a great presentation uh, about C++ uh, from it's it's like from 1988 or something just great that will get moved to wonders of technology but i guess this is also a, a fun playlist where with all my weird music clips that I found find and this is a playlist I, I, I've had for a long time so it's now currently thousand over 1000 videos where I would say 95% is uh, music uh, but on that wonders of technology playlist here uh, there is one video I watched uh, like last week about uh, toy box a presentation held by the creator and, and maintainer of toy box called Rob Landley. And I think uh, this this was also really interesting. And I watched a couple of more presentations from Rob Landley and uh, also took a look at this toy box and his other projects that he have. Um, very fascinating things. It's like a tool chain similar to the GNU tool chain, but the toy box which is, uh, he, he also was the maintainer of Busybox. Let's not get in too much into all of that stuff here. You can just watch one of his talks. But it's a tool chain similar to GNU, but without one of the most important things uh, for Rob here is to create a tool chain without GPL uh, license, especially GPL3, but they don't want GPL at all because the, the, the um, target for this tool chain is uh, actually Android uh, devices and it it's meant to be coupled with uh, Linux Android so it's like GNU slash Linux that's like what we are using you know 
but this the, what his vision is to have toy box slash android linux um, so you could have a, a base to create an operating system for an android phone that it, it is very 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 interesting and especially he, he the reasoning why he don't want gpl and stuff here that's that is kind of important information i think the reason is that Google have a zero GPL tolerance. They don't accept any GPL code whatsoever. No GPL2, no GPL3. And they did this de decision when GPL3 was introduced. They, they just, whoa, no, not a single chance that we will have any viral things in our, in our uh, 100,000 billion code base, you know, we can't have something that spreads a virus inside of that, you know, kind of, I'm, you know, uh, and they also, uh, when, when they made this decision, they also said, well, we don't want any GPL2 either, so, so they, they, don't, they don't accept any uh, GPL code, and since he really wanted to target Android devices, he, he needed to, to create the BS, uh, or make it with a different license that would get accepted by companies because it's not really only Google it's definitely not just Google companies uh, don't want to use the GPL license because they don't yeah whatever uh, and and he have he have a great understanding on this because he is actually the <laughs> the person who started uh, suing companies kind of uh, for using GPL license when he was maintaining busybox uh, Busybox had the GPL2 uh, license and when he uh, inherited the maintenance of the Busybox project he also got a long list of companies uh, that were known to be uh, violating the GPL license by using uh, Busybox in their closed source projects and he had a list of all these companies and in the chain of events, uh, he was the one who started um, lawsuits against all of those companies. And that was kind of what started the big panic mode uh, among other companies for using GPL. So he, he, he really uh, understands the implications in, in ins and outs, but he, he is kind of a... I also like him because he's a he's one of those weird guys, you know, a bit of an arrogant, uh, uh, not that different from Linus Torvalds uh, personality, so to speak. And when I was looking into this toy box and, and his other projects, um, I found that one thing that he, he would like to have included in the toy box toolchain, but that which isn't there right now, is uh, Linus Torvalds. Uh, micro emacs build i just read that as a side note somewhere you know and i was like what i have never heard about it but um, i never really thought about it what editor is linus using you know and apparently linus is using a uh, micro emacs which is a fork of gnu emacs but uh, it's like a, the fork happened a long time ago um not sure if this is the date when, when Micro Emacs uh, was greater, I guess so. So 1985 it forked off uh, because it felt that, that GNU Emacs was becoming too bloated. Uh, maybe here, or maybe this is 23 years ago. This is probably more correct, Wh whatever. But just imagine how much more bloated uh, GNU Emacs is now, 23 years later. And this uh, Micro Emacs is like a super lightweight version of Emacs. And just a quick Google, or maybe I just clicked on one of these links, brought me to uh, git.kernel.org. And here we can find a repository, a, a, a Git repository, with this Micro Emacs. And look, uh, Linus Torvalds is the one who made uh, the last commits to it. Not that active commit history because, yeah, I guess it's perfect software, you know. <laughs> but uh, he's not the only one who, ha who have added commits. But as you can see, the, it, it's like here we have 2010, here we have 2018. So it's not super active because there are not that much to, to do with it. And what you can do here is actually just copy the URL down here, you see. So if I open 
or if I do this, and then we copy this URL, and then we open a terminal, and then we do a git clone, paste that URL here, that will clone that repo, <laughs> which is like zero size. Um, we can cd into that directory, and then we can do a make, and that will compile micro emacs here. And then we can execute micro emacs. If you have ever downloaded or even <laughs> compiled a GNU emacs, then we can now see here, this is quite different. I haven't investigated this any further, I don't know which features are left out and what this included and what not. One obvious thing is that this is a, a terminal only. Uh, normal Emacs is uh, usually run uh, in a GTK uh, window kind of thing. Whatever, that is another tab in my browser, which, you know, this is what happens when you click on links uh, on, for example, a show note like this, and then all of a sudden you're watching Rob Landley and uh, something completely different and then you find yourself installing Linus Torvalds editor and thinking to yourself maybe I should use this maybe I shouldn't maybe I should buy one of these old uh, oil drilling platforms and create uh, uh, my own country to evade uh, copyright laws and, and run a BitTorrent uh, tracker from there or maybe I shouldn't who knows there's lots of things that can happen when you have a lot of tabs in your browser. Have a great day, everybody.